G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. And today I have a pattern that I have been promising so many of you for a couple of years now. My apologies, it's taken me so long to get to this one. I did want it to be absolutely right though. So, so many people are a little bit uh, wary of using joints. So um, I've been requested a fully non-jointed bear, but of course I wanted to keep all of that shape and, and beautiful design that we get with a jointed bear. There's definitely some things that we lose if we don't use joints, but this little guy is absolutely beautiful. Still kept all of that beautiful shape. It's a great size. And of course, the benefits of no joints at all is that you can make a nursery bear. You can make bears for babies and make them totally safe. Now, this is how I've made this one and you'll be using safety eyes and a safety nose, but there's little tweaks that you can do along the way to really brighten things up. A simple scarf or a beautiful bow. This one's made up in Sherpa, and I have designed this one for fabric with a little bit of pile. So Sherpa is one of my favorite fabrics, but you can certainly make this one up in a nice short acrylic, and I'm going to teach you how to work with that backing fabric. Also, remember this one for a memory bear. So bunny rugs, old dressing gowns will make up beautifully in this design. So there is more sewing. When you don't use joints, there's definitely more sewing. There's some tricky bits, um, but I'm gonna walk you through it every step of the way. So you'll just need your free pattern. I've got that all ready for you down in the description box below, the little gray arrow there that you click on. You'll find those free pattern templates. You just need to print those out on your own home printer. Do set your printer to be printing at actual size and also uh, A4 or letter. If you have any printing issues, just talk to me in the comments and Mr. T and I will work those out for you. So. Who's ready to make my beautiful little bear? Remember also all seam allowances are included in my pattern, so you simply just cut on the line. So let's get busy and get started and see what we're going to need to put him together. So let's begin making our beautiful plush unjointed bear by going through the materials and requirements. I'm also going to take you through my PVA mix routine, which I apply to the back of any knit stretch fabrics, um, particularly uh, fabrics with pile like Sherpa or um, acrylic furs, and it stabilizes the backing fabric, making it much more like mohair and makes it much easier to work with. It still has some stretch in it, but it definitely makes it doable. And it makes the sewing process so much easier. So, but first of all, the pieces that we're going to need to go along with our bear, we are going to need some eyes. Now, in keeping with the whole thought of this being a child safe project, I would suggest that you use, I'm assuming you're going to be using safety eyes. I'm not doing that. I don't keep a lot of safety eyes here. I'll be adding my premium glass eyes at the end. Um, but we will proceed as if we're going to use safety eyes and the best size for this project is probably between a 12 millimeter and a 14 millimeter eye. So, uh, and the pattern lends itself to safety eyes very well. It's very deep set in the eyes. So you'll still get that nice shape and pull in. In the same, uh, following the same idea, I'm going to be using a safety nose. You, you may all know that I hate safety noses, um, but the flock ones are tolerable. And if you are making for a child and you're working with a plush like, or a Sherpa like I am here, it's much easier to add a nice flock nose than to be um, stitching a nose. Um, it's quite tricky when you're working with acrylic fur to stitch a nose. So this is preferable, but the flock ones you can actually cover. You can cover with fabric or a little stretch lycra. So you can really make them your own um, and still make it very safe, child safe. I will be using a 20 millimeter. I do have 20 millimeter ones. I just don't have them right here now. Um, and then we'll also just need a little bit of pearl thread for stitching a mouth line in. You'll definitely need your extra strong thread for some hand sewing that we're going to be doing. We're going to be filling with polyester filling. And so what I want to show you first up is, as I said, 
that technique. Now, I can't convey, I can't stress enough to you how important this technique is to the success of your finished product. So I have my Sherpa here. I'm making mine up in Sherpa. I'm gonna show you some other alternatives. But I have my pattern pieces all drawn up, all traced out. I've traced those with a laundry marker. It needs to be a laundry marker because of this treatment we're going to be adding. And also even Sherpa has a pile, a pile direction, you can feel it. It'll be rough going one way and smooth going the other. So make sure that you follow your pile arrow directions when you're laying out your pattern. I've got that all popped out there. Now, let me show you another alternative, a shortish pile acrylic that has a nice firm backing fabric. It's still a stretch knit, but it's quite firm. This is a good option for this pattern as well but you will need to do the same PVA treatment also. Now, let me show you on a smaller piece. I've got my two foot pads here. Now, I don't fully coat the back of all of my pieces, but I do fully coat my head pieces, my side head pieces, my centre head gusset, and my foot pads. I also quite liberally coat my centre gusset especially through here, because these are the tight leg curves that we're going to be sewing in. You're going to find it so much easier if you go over all of your pattern pieces and just use the PVA mixture on your points, all your sharp points. Across here, where we're putting the foot pad in, makes it easier to pin it all in. So it's, this one's already glued up with the PVA, so it's still very flexible but it's got that, just that strength and that non-fray um, property about it now because of the PVA mixture. So the mixture is simply your white glue. It's called many different things in different countries. It can be called Elmer's uh, overseas. We call it Aquadia here or PVA. It's a white glue, it's a wood glue, and you simply mix one part glue with two parts water. Mix that all together. I just have it in a little container ready. And then we just go ahead and apply it with a brush. For your bigger pieces, you find that something like a tinting brush is really handy. A hairdressing tinting brush, or perhaps you can use, just I use my wide bristle brush for the smaller areas. And I'm just going to show you here just about mixing that mixture together. And the mixture will just sit on top. So it's sitting on top of the fabric. It's not seeping all the way through. So make sure that your mix is heavy enough that it, it's not just seeping through. So it's not gonna affect that pile on the other side. So you can see I'm just working it, in, working it into that backing fabric and that's going to dry and it's going to be just like this one. So keep a bottle of that mixed up all the time because you're gonna find it really, really handy. So the other key points on this one, because we're not jointing it, the areas you really need to make sure that you've applied this mixture to are the center backs where the opening is so that this won't be fraying away because this is our opening where we do all of our work through. Also, your top neck edges and the tops of your arms. So when we go to apply, uh, add the arms, they're joined in with the neck joint. So that, sorry, the neck opening. So everything needs to be no fray. We're gonna be trimming some of the pile away. Same with the neck edges here, the lower neck edges. They need to be nicely treated. So once you've done that, cutting out acrylic or anything with a pile is quite different to cutting out um, just straight fabric with no pile. What we want to do is take small sharp scissors and we're going in between the pile. We're slipping our blades in and we're cutting only the backing fabric. You can feel it as you go. So you want to snip, snip, pull those scissors out and again get in between that pile and just be snipping the backing fabric. Because otherwise, 
you'll lose all that lovely pile on the edge and you'll have a cut straight edge of pile and it will look really odd on your project. So just carefully go ahead, cut out all of your pattern pieces and then we'll come back and we'll get started. So I have all my pattern pieces cut out now. Now I do want to stress and want you to remember that this pattern, I designed it for Sherpa. So for absolute best results, Sherpa is always going to give you the best finish. That pile length on Sherpa is around about a centimetre or just over. And the other thing you have to remember, if you're going to be using just a, a faux fur, an acrylic fur, you don't want the pile length to exceed 12 millimetres because when we go to join our head and our arm pieces, longer pile would just make the job just too congested. It just won't work. So this pile length of about a centimetre is absolutely ideal and if you attempted to make it in a no pile fabric, you have to remember you're going to get quite a skinny bear. It's going to be a completely different look. So always remember that when substituting fabrics. So you could make it up in a, a nice thick polar fleece, but your bear is still going to be a much slimmer version. So just keep that in mind. So I've, as I said, I've cut out all of my pieces. They are PVA treated and we're all ready to go. So we're going to start with our center body gusset here and we've got our inner legs both of our inner legs so the way that we begin we're going to sew the leg curves in now i'm working on the gusset piece this is what you have to remember you also have to make sure that you've got the toes pointing upwards to the neck this is the top of the neck and we're going to match up these two curves so because we're working with pile fabric, we need to tuck in that pile. We're gonna start, we should have a little point extending here. So because I've treated my, the back of my fabrics with that PVA mixture, these points are holding really well. If you don't use the PVA mixture on a knit back synthetic, it's basically like trying to sew marshmallows. That's the best way I can explain it. So this holds everything together, but it's still quite flexible and it does still have some stretch in it. So I'm just going to pin that all the way and so that that matches up. I'm tucking the fur in as I go. And there's also lots of different qualities of Sherpa. So the backing fabric can differ. This is a very good quality of Sherpa that I use. And I have done a video that is a Sherpa review and talks to you all about um, that PVA treatment and also talks to you about faux furs that you can use. And take a look at that. I'll put the link at the top of the screen for you there. Have a look at that if you're unsure about choosing your fabrics. So now I've got that one pinned into place. I'm going to take a single strand of my extra strong thread with my needle and I'm going to just overcast that into place so that I can remove all my pins. I'm just going to do what we call an overcast stitch. Some people call it a tacking stitch or a whip stitch. It's just to keep it all nice and tight and in place. Now, once you have that seam just overcast into place, we can now take that to the machine and we're going to sew that seam with a four millimeter seam allowance two times. I've got a jeans needle in my machine and I have my stitch length set to number two. So, so one seam and then another uh, line of stitching straight on top of that one and do make sure that you back and forth on your start and finish so it's nice and secure. Once you've done that you just repeat with the opposite side and remember toes pointing up towards the neck and also do all of your work on the center gusset. Don't flip it over and do your sewing from this side. It really changes how those little front legs sit. So there you can see, I've got my two inner leg pieces stitched into place, just to give you an idea. So that's the inside leg, that's how our little bear will sit. We need to add our side body pieces here. But before we do that, 
because of the way that we're attaching the head, we're going to be sewing the head on. I take a centimeter of pile off of the neck edge there. So right down to that backing fabric, exactly one centimeter. It's going to decongest that whole area when we go to make those joins. So in saying that, I'm now gonna take one of my side body pieces and I've done the same thing on that neck edge, one centimeter right down to the backing fabric. So now we're going to add our side body piece and we are working on that side body piece. So we've got our neck edges lined up here. Starting at the top, we're gonna to pin those into place, making sure they're beautifully lined up. And we're going to bring that, those edges together and you're meeting up your seam that you just made with that corner right there in that bend of that side body. And we're gonna put a pin in there as well. And then we want to tuck our fur and securely pin the rest of that section there. So important when you're making a project that doesn't have joints, that everything is matched up beautifully because each piece corresponds with the next piece. So now we bring the toes together, tucking that fur in, making sure that's the perfect meet point. Again, because I've got PVA mixture on those points, it's making it so much easier to keep everything nice and tidy. So again, I'm just going to pin all the way. And there we have that first side body piece all pinned into, the pl into place from the neck to the toe. Now I'm going to go ahead and overcast just as we did with our other seams first so that I can remove all of my pins before I sew that seam two times just as we did before with a four millimeter seam allowance. Do make sure that you reinforce that corner, go over it a couple of times and also of course all of your start and finishes. Now again all of this work is being done on the side panel. You don't want to flip it over and be trying to sew and do this work from this side because you'll end up with twisted legs. Well, your legs won't be twisted. The little bear's legs will be twisted. So there's, there is a purpose to all of these um, uh, little instructions and it really does make all the difference. At the end of your project, your little bear's legs will turn in just beautifully and straight. So I'm gonna get that one overcast and stitched into place. And then when I've done that, I'm gonna repeat with the opposite side with the other side panel. And again, I'm going to be doing all of that work on the side panel. So there you can see that I've sewn both of my front side body pieces in place all the way from neck to toe. And now we're going to sew the lower leg seam. Now I've done one on this side. You've got a mark on your pattern pieces. Make sure that you do transfer all of your marks. They're all very important. And we just bring that leg together and we're going to match up again we're working on the side body piece here we're going to match up that mark that's on the bottom of your side body piece this one here tuck that fur in we want to line it up with the inner leg seam there so those two should meet push that inner leg seam in towards the body and we're just going to tuck the fur and make sure that that spot is exactly lined up right on that seam there. Take my pin through there and anchor that in. And now I just need to match up again. I'm gonna pin, tuck all that fur in down to the base of the heel there 
and then I'm going to overcast it and I'm going to sew that seam, four millimeter seam allowance, two times. Very important to back and forth a few times here on where that mark is and then you should have this result here. Our next seam is the center back seam which we are going to sew from neck edge at the top here again lining that up well and we're going to leave an opening so you've got your marks for your opening that's where we're going to be turning everything through on our bear and doing all of our work through that opening and of course you should have your PVA mixture on there so that that opening won't fray away line up those marks and right down to the bottom here and of course I've got all of my points have that PVA mix on them as well so it's easy for me to meet those points and they're holding themselves well so now I'm going to sew that same four millimeter seam allowance from the neck edge to that first mark I'm going to sew that two times make sure you're back and forth particularly on your start and finish of your openings because of all the pressure that's going to be applied there when we do stuffing and turning and also start again here and down to the base there and sew both of those seams two times and now we're going to sew in our little bottom piece so what I've done first of all is I've just opened up a couple of those tacking stitches and removed those so that I can open that seam out nice and flat because I'm going to take that bottom flap now and that center mark there that I have made I'm going to take my pin through at the seam allowance and I'm going to take my pin straight through also at the seam allowance but I'm going straight through that center back seam push that pin all the way down now I'm going to tuck the fur I'm going to start on one side making sure this is anchored in right and I'm going to start pinning that little bottom piece in place I'm going to go from side to side so that I'm doing that evenly Pull that one out and you'll find that that will line up perfectly those pieces will line up perfectly to where you finish your stitching here and here so I'm going to get them all pinned into place then I'm going to overcast that whole section and that has my bottom section all uh, hand stitched into place and I've been able to remove all my pins now this section here is too difficult to get under the machine foot you won't be able to get it under there and sew it accurately so just this section the top curve we sew in by hand so just I'm just going to be starting about here now I'm using my extra strong thread I've got a single strand with a knot in the end for the sake of you being able to see this stitch I'm using a slightly darker color but you would match it to your backing fabric but I'm going to start by coming in at my seam allowance on the underneath here and I'm going to just first sew two stitches one right on top of the other now this is a stab back stitch and it's the stitch we use for any hand sewing um, in soft sculpture it's the strongest stitch it's linked um, back and front so it's super super strong I will put a link at the top of uh, the video there and you'll be able to go to a video of mine where I show you this stitch up close but I'm going to give you a good look at this one today so I've got two stitches one on top of the other I'm going to come up from underneath again just traveling down the length of one stitch keeping to my seam allowance and I'm going to go back in my last exit hole 
So there's my first stitch. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to come up again from underneath, traveling along again, nice small stitches, back into that exit hole again, pulling those stitches nice and firm. Again from the underneath, coming out and back into that exit hole every time. So the, the stitch is linked, as I said, back and front, and you'll be able to make it just as beautiful and straight as you can a machine stitch. And once you've done this a few times, you'll find it super easy. This is how I used to hand sew all of my creations, no matter how big they were. Even big four foot bears used to be all hand sewn with this stitch. So it's one you definitely need to know moving forward. So I'm going to stitch just to the same distance the other side, just so that then we can tuck these sections under the machine, we can easily stitch those. When you're sewing with an extra strong thread and you're doing a stab back stitch, um, which this is called, you only need to sew it once because it's sewn back and front. So, but when you sew these sections on the machine, as usual, we sew them two times. And you want to make sure that you're linking up with your stitching here. Again, you're doing all of this work on that bottom gusset. Our final step in making the body, of course, is to sew the foot pads in. Now I've already done one there. You can see beautifully stitched in. And if you've kept to your seam allowances, these foot pads will fit in beautifully. Now, lots of options here with your foot pads. Because I'm making mine out of Sherpa and it is that off-white color, I'm just making the same uh, foot pad. So I, I like that real plushy look when I'm using Sherpa. However, if you are using a different colored Sherpa, you could always change up and put a different colored Sherpa foot pad in. You could also use interfaced felt for your foot pads. It depends on what you're doing with the rest of your bear. Um, you might be making a two-toned bear with two colors of Sherpa and certainly that will work really well. If you're making a more natural colored bear, just remember that the the basic rule is that the foot pads should be lighter than your body color. It just generally looks better. There's always exceptions to that rule, but if you're unsure, go for a slightly lighter tone than what you're using. So we're gonna pin these in place. Now remember that your pile direction should go, should be running downwards from toe to heel. So we're gonna take that foot pad and we're gonna put a, need, a pin through that mark that we've got there on our foot pad template. I've also, again, I've opened up that overcasting stitching on my top and bottom seam so that I can open those seams out nice and flat because we want to take our pin through that seam allowance straight through the center of the seam and it really does need to be centered. So I want to see that that's going and it is straight through and then we're going to flip him over and we're going to do the same on the heel. I've also opened up that stitching. We're going to make that nice and flat. Again, take our pin through at our four millimeter seam allowance straight through the center of that seam. I'm going to show you the easiest way to pin in a foot pad. So we're going to tuck all the fur, of course. We're back up to the top of the foot now. We're tucking the fur and starting on one side and we're just going to start bringing those edges together, matching those curves. You want to take your pin through all of the layers and then just take up a little bit of fabric on the other side then push your pin head all the way down. It's gonna clamp that down nice and tight. We're going to cross over to the other side so that we're pinning this in evenly. Make sure, again, that center point is pushed all the way in. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put our pin all the way through both layers, flip it over, take up just a little bit of that fabric 
and push the pin head all the way down. So it's the, the clamping down of that pin head that's gonna hold it all beautifully in place. I'm gonna get it all pinned in and I'll show you how that should look. So now that's all pinned into place, you can just go ahead with your um, extra strong thread, single strand, and again, just overcast that paw pad into place so that you can remove all your pins. And then you just go ahead and sew that foot pad in using that same stab back stab stitch right the way around there at your four millimeter seam allowance and you'll get the perfect little turned foot pad. And that completes our beautiful little body, those foot pads in and you can see already just sitting up there lovely. It's a lovely stable little pattern there. So what we don't do this time is we don't turn it through. We leave it um, inside out like that because of when we put the head on, we've got to put that in with right sides together. So we're gonna pop that one aside and we need to now make the arms. So this is the first little arm already made up and the process of doing that is very, very simple. First of all, we're going to do the same thing with the tops of each arm and we're going to take off all of the pile for about a centimetre down on both pieces. So it's less congested when we go to add it to that next seam. And all we're going to do is as we have throughout, we are going to pin, matching up all of our sides. We're going to overcast. I'm going to take that right down to there. So I'm going to pin all the way around. We're leaving this end open. Then we're going to overcast. Then we're going to stitch that one, the same four millimeter seam allowance, two times. You can go ahead and turn that arm through. And of course, all throughout this, depending on whether you're using a fur or a Sherpa, with Sherpa, you find that you can pull out those fibers just using something like an awl. You don't want to use a wire brush for Sherpa because you will just really mat that fur. So just carefully lift that pile out from the seams. Of course, if you're using fur, you certainly can use a wire brush. So now we've got that turned through. We're going to fill just the lower part of the hand with some polyester filling here. Now, forceps are great for this, taking it right down to the end. And I do pack the end of that little paw really, really firm. But the key point to remember here is that we don't fill the whole arm because we're working with a pile fabric. And because of the way that we're attaching these arms, we don't want any bulk up the top. So I'm just gonna compare it to my other one. So from just above the wrist section here, I've got nothing in there at all. So, and, and you, you can't see that because the pile is so thick and it's going to make those arms sit really beautifully at the side of your bear. If you fill the arms up, all the way to the top, your little bear's arms are gonna be sticking out straight out at the sides. And it's a very unattractive look because you want a really comfortable looking bear. Bears should look like they're happy and squishy and relaxed. So just filling just that little bit. So to just above the wrist there, make sure that they're both the same. And when we add that to our bear, it's going to be added inside here. You can see that the weight of the stuffing at the bottom is gonna let those arms just sit nice and softly relaxed down at the side there. If it was filled up, they would sit out like this. So now we're going to just go ahead and really make sure those edges are lined up. I'm just gonna stitch on the machine straight across that edge so it's nice and flat. Okay, so there we've got our completed two little arms and now we're going to actually attach them to the body. So this is where you'll be glad of trimming that fur away from the edges there. 
So we need to remember that the paws need to be facing the front. We're gonna tuck that first one in down through that neck opening there. Pull it down inside, get up from underneath if that helps. Pull that through to the neck edge. And we need to tack it into place. So because these arms are incorporated into the neck edge and the full head seam when we sew it around. So this is your front here. The arm starts at that first seam. So you've got one on this side and one on this side. The other arm will start on this seam. So this is your start point. So make sure all of that fur pile is out of the way. We're just gonna line up that edge and we're just gonna securely tack it into place just with our extra strong thread and right on the edge. Just lining that up so that those edges are meeting Everything's nice and flat because there's no pile there in the way. So it's quite a few layers there and we're going to be adding a head to that as well. So you really need everything nice and flat and really well secured. So just letting you all know, everybody who has been asking for a fully unjointed bear, they are harder to sew. Um, so if you haven't given jointing a try, I think you might after this. But they're certainly useful, a fully unjointed bear is useful for if you make it in a fabric that can be washed and you use your safety eyes and your safety nose, then you're able to pop it in the washing machine. So I guess that's a plus. So that's that first arm in place. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with the other one. So we need to tuck this one down through and get that one lined up that side and stitched on the inside. So remember, the arms have to be the right way and the body has to be inside out and they go inside. I'm gonna get the second one into place and then you can see how that looks. And there we go. So that has those two little arms in place. I've got them just poking out the back uh, opening there, which actually makes it easier because we've got a whole unstuffed head to tuck in there as well. So it's gonna get really full on. So everything's nice and flat. Those edges are lined up. Give that a good stretch out. Remembering that we have treated those edges. So we're gonna to have to have enough room to be able to tuck in. So you understand why we don't fill the tops of the arms. So we can put that one aside now and we're gonna get busy making that head. So let's start with our two side head pieces here. And the first thing that we do again is take off that centimeter of pile at the neck edge on both of them. And I also take just the very tip off of the nose, the pile off of there. It just stops it being quite so congested in that area. So then we're gonna put right sides together tucking in all of this fur and we're going to be sewing our center front chin seam from nose all the way down to the base of the neck there make sure that you do as we have throughout tuck in all of that pile give it an overcast and then we will sew that on the machine two times at our four millimeter seam allowance. Okay, so you can go ahead and turn that one through once you've done that, because it's always good to go ahead and pull out all of the fur from the seam. So now we're gonna pop that one back through and I always remove all of my tacking stitches, my overcasting stitches 
from that center seam because it always sits better, it always sits straighter if you um, can flatten that seam out. So now we're going to take our center head gusset piece and we're going to do just like we did with the foot pad in that we're going to put a pin through at the seam allowance at our center mark and then straight through that seam. And now we're going to line up again, just as we did with our foot pad. We're going to pin it in the same way as well. We're going to go through both layers, take up some on the underside. Much easier to do with that PVA mix in place because our fabric isn't just collapsing. What we want to do is line up those two marks. So the mark on your side head piece with the mark there on your center gusset. So my next step is to pop a pin straight through there. And then match up on the opposite side. So then we treat this section just as we do, just as we did the foot pad. So I'm going to overcast from that mark all the way around, being careful to really center that front. And then I'm going to sew my stab back stitch right the way around, just to that front no seam. Make sure that you do a couple of extra stitches here and here um, to reinforce that for when we turn that through. So. Keep to your seam allowance four millimetres and just treat it like those little foot pads. So again, once you've stitched that seam, that front nose section, pop that one through and pull out all of the fur from your seams. Check that you've got everything nice and straight. Pop that one back again. And now we're just going to continue on and we're going to tuck that fur and line up those edges. On each side, I do one side at a time. I'm going to line that up all the way down to the back neck edge. And you'll find, if you've kept your seam allowances, that will fit in beautifully. So we're going to pin and overcast all the way down to the neck. And then that section you can sew on the machine as usual, two times with your four millimeter seam allowance. And then you just flip over and do exactly the same on the other side. And remember that throughout this, we're working on the center head gusset. You don't want to do that work from this side. Now you can go ahead and turn that head through and you want to do what we've been doing all the way through and pulling out the fur from those seams. And now we're all ready to get our nose and eye placement done. Now, it, where I'm, I'm doing this project, assuming that you're all using safety eyes because of the nature of the product of the project. So to do that, you need to temporarily stuff the head so that you get your placement right. And I know that some of you may think, no, I just, I can see where they're going to go. I'm going to pop them in. You'll never, ever, ever get it right by guessing it. So it's worth this little bit of time to get that placement absolutely perfect because you've put so much work into making the bear already um, and you want to finish well. So I'm going to just put some filling. You want to make sure that you're filling out all of those top curves, these curves here and the muzzle is well filled out. Now the nose is fairly straightforward of where you put the nose, but of course where the eyes go, um, there's two of them, so they have to be lined up correctly. So I've just got that head just filled out. It's still very soft, but the shape is all pushed out. So I can see exactly where everything needs to go. Now, I'm only adding the nose at this stage because I am using glass eyes because that's what I have. I'll put them, them in at the end. But you will be looking to add your safety eyes and your safety nose. Now you need to be careful for the placement of that nose. You don't want to, it to be sitting up on top. Neither do you want it down here. So it needs to sit right on the edge. So take that nose and check on it. Now with that safety nose, this is the one that we that I showed you at the beginning. It's a little flock nose with the the little shank at the back ready to clamp it in. That 
nose can be treated in several different ways to really up the ante. So first of all, you could do what I did with my blue snuggle bear. And you can see that little nose there. It's the same flock nose, but it's been covered in fabric. So little print fabric that matches his colors. And that comes together beautifully. That's as simple as taking a little oval of fabric that's just a little bit bigger than that nose, sew a running stitch around it, little bit of clear craft glue, pop it over the top and pull the drawstrings in around and you get a nice tight little cover. It's like covering a button. Um, and if you want to see that procedure, just have a look at my little blue snuggle bear in that video, I show you how to do that. Most of you are pretty clear on that. So alternatively, I've gone ahead, and this is for my masterclass people, I've taken that nose and I've gone ahead and sculpted over the top of it. So now I've got a larger nose, which is what I was after. I've been able to make it the color that I want. I've used epoxy sculpt there, and it's all ready to still clamp in place, just the same as it would be if it were that smaller. So it was this nose, and that's what I've done to it. I've been able to paint it up, and it looks fabulous. So, or of course, you can just use the nose just as it is. The flock ones are quite nice for this sort of project. The noses that I hate are the molded plastic animal noses. They really cheapen anything that you make, so try and avoid them, but these are quite sweet. So I'm going to estimate where my nose should sit on my little bear. As I said, we don't want it sitting up here on top. We don't want it down here. We need it to be right on the edge there. So what I'll do is I will make that hole with my awl, I'll enlarge it with my knitting needle, um, and then I'll unstuff the head to be adding that. With the eyes, the eyes sit exactly in where the, where the point comes there, where it's the smallest. That's the best spot for the eyes. Up here, they will look completely wrong, too low and you won't see them. So just about here, you can see it's a real natural spot for the eyes to sit. You want to do the same thing, make your holes, your marks, enlarge those holes, pull out the stuffing, and then you can add your safety eyes, clamping them into place like I will with that nose. But what I'm gonna do with the nose is I want to sew some, uh, uh, some nose threads down to create that little mouth. When you're using a safety nose, you can't, because there's a clamp behind it, you can't get that thread right up so it's coming out from under the nose. So I'm gonna show you that before I put the nose on, I'm actually gonna take a thread through so that I can stitch that later when the head is filled. You'll notice also I've just grabbed the two ear pieces and pinned them into place because that helps me determine all of my facial details. So I'm just going to unstuff that head. I'm gonna make that hole unstuff that head and I'll show you how I pop that thread through. So there I have that hole made for the nose and that's ready for me to pop that in. But as I said, I want to add that nose thread so that I'll be able to put the nose over it. Then the nose thread will pull straight down from underneath the nose. It's much cleaner, more professional finish. If you're not wanting to add a mouth smile, then you don't have to do this at all. You can just pop that nose and eyes in now and get that done. But I'm going to take my doubled strand of my pearl thread and I'm choosing just a very deep blue to go with my tones. And I'm going to come in right at the center seam, right where that hole is. And I've brought my needle through and I've just made one little stitch and bring my needle through that loop and just so that that nose mouth thread is anchored there. So once we put the nose on top, I'm going to be able to pull that down and it's gonna be in the right position to stitch the rest of that nose, uh, the little mouth line. So now that's nicely anchored, I can take that needle off and I can go ahead and add that safety nose directly on top. I'll push all of those backing fabrics down around that shank. I'll make sure that that thread is coming out straight from the base there. 
and then I'll add my clamp on the back. I hope that makes sense. So now that nose is clamped into place and of course my threads are safely coming out from directly below on that lip line. So now is probably the most challenging part of this whole exercise. We are going to collapse this head and we're going to get as small as we can because we're going to add this into the neck cavity of our bear. So what we're looking to do is this is our center front seam here, the chin seam, and we've got a mark here on the front of our bear. We want to line up those two. So we need to tuck this in, this bear head in, we need to tuck it in. I'm gonna pop those threads through as well. We're gonna use them later and we want to line everything up and they ha it has to be that the bear's head is turned the right way and it's a, it's a bit of a squeeze. So this is a challenge, but we're aiming to get that center chin seam lined up with this mark. So as soon as, I, as I'm able to tuck that all in there and bring up that center chin seam to match with my front mark, I just take my extra strong thread and needle and make a couple of stitches so that section is anchored in perfectly. So now we need to pull up those two neck edges. So the body neck edge with the arms included and the head neck edge, we bring them up to match. So as I said, it's a bit of a challenge and we've got a centre mark also at the back which lines up with our centre back seam. So again, you want to take your thread and anchor that one into place. So now I've got the centre back seam tacked in place and the centre front tacked in place. So the head, the body cavity neck opening and the head neck opening, they're the same size. So all we're going to do is now pull up those edges to meet. So it'll fit perfectly all the way around. You just have to pull that out as you go, make sure the edges are all meeting up and you go around and tack that all the way. Remember that we've got our arms incorporated in that and that's got to be stitched in as well. Pulling that out as you go and you'll get that perfect little neck circle. So go around first with your overcasting stitches, which is what I will do, and you'll find it will all fit perfectly. I'm trying to give you a good look at this. So now what you can see are those two neck edges have been brought together. So that little head has gone inside like a cup inside that neck cavity. We've lined up the front and back seams with our front and back marks and the rest have just fitted in. Pull them out and the arms are sandwiched in between those two layers. So when we pull it all through, that little bear will all be one piece. Now, jointing is way easier. <laughs> so, but if you want to sew up an animal or a bear, this is the way to do the neck. So you get a perfectly strong neck. If we just make the head separately and we sew it on, it's never, ever, ever going to be strong. Those little heads are gonna split and fall off. This is the best way to do it. Now I do want to add that I am using a very thick Sherpa. So your fabric may not be as thick as mine. But you can see what I've ended up with is I have that overcast, those layers all together. So what I do now is I'm simply going to start, I'm gonna start at the front where it's quite flat. I'm gonna come in from the underneath. I'm gonna give myself almost a centimeter seam allowance. We've got room because we did that trimming. And I'm going to sew a stab back stitch around that whole neck edge. Same stab back stitch that we've used throughout on those paw pads and that nose section. 
starting off with two as I always do and you can make your stitches larger so they can be just that little bit bigger and that's going to hold that head beautifully in place and it's a lot of layers to get through but your fabrics are a knit fabric so they're nice and soft so I'm just going to make my way around and make sure that you keep that seam a little bit bigger so that when you go around past those arms that you're incorporating those arms really well into that next seam and that has my stab back stitch done you can see all the way around that neckline we've got that little head is tucked in there so at this stage if any of you want to just joint the head you would proceed as you normally would in that instead of going through all of that you would have just run a drawstring around the top neck of the body pull it in at a 40 millimeter joint to the head and just joint it as always but for now we're going to go ahead and pull this entire body through this back opening we've already got those arms there so it's easy to pull those through everything else will come through that back opening as well and including that head and those little feet last and we should have a beautiful little completed very empty bear you can see how that's all just going to pop through that little head joined I've still got my threads there ready to be able to sew that nose that mouth line in pop him through and let's get this bear finished and there I have complete little turned through bear so now I'm going to go ahead and stuff this little bear now you can start I always start with the feet so I get those nicely packed nice and firm the body doesn't have to be packed super firm but do make sure that you've pushed out all of those lovely curves and I'm going to make my way up to about the middle here of the bottom then I'm going to firmly pack the head then I'll continue and finish with the body okay so I have my little bear all filled and everything is filled out a little softer through the belly a really really firm head and muzzle and when I filled that one up here before I added filling in here I was able to get my wool felting needle in and pack that filling up into the head so that it stays put we will take a through a couple of stitches through that neck to stop that filling ever shifting down but for now we're going to go ahead and we're going to close that opening so I'm going to start by first of all I take my tiny scissors and I'm just going to trim away anything that's really obviously overlapping don't take too much or you'll be able to see that seam then we're going to take our single strand of extra strong thread with a great big knot in the end and we're going to close that opening with a ladder stitch now I do have a video that shows you how to sew a ladder stitch closing and I will put that link at the top there it's probably easier for you to watch that than what we're doing here because I'm using white off off white thread on an off white bear so that's uh, not ideal for you being being able to see but right where that seam starts to open up I'm going to come up on one side in my seam allowance so that knot will hold I've got to travel back down that's caught in those fibers there pull those fibers out the way I'm going to travel across and I'm going to go in the opposite side and travel down just the length of one stitch I'm going to pull that in then I'm going to travel back across and I'm going into my start place my starting position that hole there I'm also going to travel down as I did on the other side keeping my stitches even travel across pull everything out give that a squeeze and pull that in I'm then going to go back over again to the other side my needle goes back into the last exit hole each time 
travel down the length of one stitch pull that needle through this is a very awkward way to do it I usually do it with the bear over my lap give it a squeeze and pull it in you need to get in your most comfortable position but just for the sake of showing you as I said, check out that video, it's nice and clear. So I'm going to go back into that last exit hole again, travel down. So I'm just going to crisscross back and forth all the way, just like a little ladder, squeezing and pulling that in as I go. I've got this section of him filled quite soft, but if I get halfway down and feel like I need a little bit more filling, I can always add it there as I go. So just continue on all the way down until that opening is closed. My little bear has now been fully stuffed, closed up, and we're going to go ahead. You can see I've popped the eyes in. You've seen me do that a million times. All of you who want to add um, glass teddy bear eyes, mostly you're my masterclass people, you know how to go ahead and do that now. We're going to stitch in that mouth line. So because I've left my threads there hanging, I've threaded them onto my longest doll needle and I've got those threads coming straight out from under that nose and they're right over that seam line. Now I want to give him just a short little top lip. You don't want to make it too long, it totally changes the look of your bear. So I'm going to take it up to just, it's probably just about a centimetre. I'm going to put my needle straight in that center seam. I'm going to have to look to find it in there and make sure it goes straight in there so that we've got a nice straight smile. And where we're going to aim to come out is where you want the corner of your smile to be. So I'm just going to take that down. I don't want it to be huge. A little further than that, a little further down. And you can test that by pulling your thread, pulling it up to the lip line there. And you can get an idea of how big that smile is going to be. I think that's going to be about right. So I'm going to pull that one through and you want to make sure that those threads aren't twisted. So they want to be going in nice and straight. Check that lip line, it's nice and straight. Then I'm going to pull those threads up and I'm going to take my needle in behind those first two threads. I don't want to catch any fabric, I'm just sliding it underneath. Hope you can see that. I'm going to take those threads, I'm going to pull them up and curve it up and making sure again that they're not twisted. Just getting rid of any fluff. One of the challenges of working with Sherpa is that it's quite porous and it does like to grab a hold of everything. So I'm going to pull on that and I want a nice amount of pull in to sculpt that mouth in a little. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side, pull it in. And I just need to take my needle and dive in the other side matched up with this side. I'm going to exit at the back of the base of the head where I can tie a knot and then that little mouth line will be in place. Now that lovely little lip line is in place, but you can't see it because all of that fur is covering it. So first of all, pull all the fur out, out from the stitches, out from around it and out from the chin. Pull it all forward. Take some very sharp little scissors and you want to trim in a nice, neat mouth line just to expose those stitches. And it really does give it a lovely look. Be careful not to snip your stitches. 
but just the fur. I do love Sherpa for this. It really does trim well. And you can get a nice rounded little muzzle there. Round this chin off. Take as little or as much as you like, but it's just given him just a cleaner line there. Take your time with this. Look at it from every angle. And curl it up. We're creating that little chubby little top lip there. You might be using acrylic fur and that will trim up well also. And also while we're here, you can probably see that I've done the same thing and cut into the corner of those eyes. So I've created like a passageway along the muzzle so that we can see the eyes. On both sides, trim any excess away so he's not looking angry. Don't want an angry bear. Fluff it all out again. Have a little play with it until you're perfectly happy with that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our ears. So we're looking to create the little ears. So I've got one here all stitched up. We're just going to take those two pieces. Now I've taken just a little bit of fur off the lower edge, not very much at all. Maybe about four millimetres I've taken off there. Again, just to decongest that area. We're putting right sides together. On both of those, we're going to tuck the fur in. You've got little marks on your pattern templates. And we're just going to pin right the way around. We're going to tuck that fur in, going to overcast that ear, and then we're going to stitch. Make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish. Stitch a nice small seam allowance. So I've made mine around about three millimetres right the way around and again back and forth here and then we just turn that through and we have that little ear. I have both those little ears turned through now and make sure that you really get those corners pushed out. I do give my the top edge of my ear a little trim so it's all nice and tidy and you can also take just some off the base there. So now this is an extra step that I do, you don't have to do this, but I like to just seal these two pieces of fabric together so that the ear, it's easier to get a nice cupped shape when you sew them on, but you don't have to do that. If you don't want to do this, go ahead and just turn those little edges under and just tack that opening closed. But I'm going to take just my clear craft glue. I've put some on a card there and I've got a wooden skewer. I'm just gonna take up some of that glue and I'm just going to smear the inside just a little bit just to enable me to just close those together and I like to give it that little cupped shape while it's drying. As I said, completely optional and up to you. I'm going to get those both done and then just close those openings. So now we're ready to sew ears on. Not my favourite part. Um, I don't think it's anybody's favourite part of making a bear, but it needs to be done. We don't want a little deaf bear. So I've already pinned one into place. Now pinning is absolutely crucial in getting a beautiful shape to the ear. These ones sit fairly far back. Don't have them sitting too far forward. They will look quite odd. So just over that first curve there will give you the best look. Now the pinning method is just a matter of I've got my pin there ready to line up with the opposite side and I'm going to take my pin straight through the front center seam there ready to add to the head. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to pin it in just like that and pin my ears on. Then we're just going to get those straight, flat, 
fat looking ears and also they're drooping down. What you want is to take your pin and you want to over angle it and pop that pin in there. And then, ne then our next pin, we're gonna push it right back, straight back and about an inch along, gonna pin that in there. So we've pinned it straight back and then we can curl the rest around and it's gonna hold that lovely curve. You want to make sure that it is matched up on the other side, which I will do in a minute. Pop the other pin through there. I'll be checking that and making sure that's all even. Once it's all even, we're gonna stitch them on the simplest way possible. So you can see that beautiful cupped shape in there that gives it real dimension. And also make sure that you look at those ears from every angle. So tip him over, turn him around, look from the back side and make sure that everything is the same. So now I'm gonna take my medium doll needle and I've got a long strand of my extra strong thread with a knot in the end. I'm going to come in at the back of the head somewhere, just behind the ear, it doesn't really matter where. Sewing ears on when you're using a plush fabric like this is largely done by feel. So I've got my finger there at the front of where my pin is and I'm gonna take my needle through and I'll certainly know when it comes through because it will hit my finger and that's the spot. So take that one all the way through because you really can't see through all that plush. At the back there where that knot is, I'm gonna pull that away. I'm gonna find that entry spot. You don't always need to do this, but sometimes with fabric that little knot won't slip in. So I'm just making that hole just a tiny bit bigger. It just means that I can pull on that and that knot will slip into the head, which it has there. Pull that through. Now my first step is to take my needle. I'm going to dive in to the front of that ear where that pin is. I'm gonna dive in there and I'm gonna take my needle out at the base. Again, I'm gonna use my finger or my thumb to feel where that spot is. Take my needle across because we want to anchor in the base of the ear as well. So there we go, just the same, only at the base there. Pull that all the way through. You can see the front of that ear pulling down. We're now going to do the same at the base. We're going to dive in where that pin is into the head, we're gonna come out back where we started. Again, feeling with my thumb. Pull that through. We've got the base anchored in as well. So I'm now going to go back and forth at least three times. So the front and the base of the ear are fully anchored to the head. So I've now made that trip three or four times. I've come in at the base again, and this time, instead of coming out at the front of the ear, I'm gonna bring my needle out, just traveling a little way along the ear curve at the back there. Again, I'm feeling that. Bring that needle through. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to dive in. So I've traveled a little further along, I'm gonna find the base of that ear in amongst all of that plush. I'm going to dive in. And I'm gonna come out and move along just a little. So I'm gonna work that stitch all the way through till that whole ear curve is sewn in. So you can travel through that head at the base of the ear anywhere you like, crisscrossing till it's all firmly stitched on. And none of those stitches will be seen because of course they're all going underneath. That also makes it the most secure way to sew on a teddy bear's ear because you're not just sewing it onto the surface, you're sewing it into that stuffing. So just make your way across back and forth. When you finish, just exit out the back of the head here and knot off and then just repeat with the opposite ear. 
So here is our gorgeous completed little non-jointed bear and what a gorgeous little shape. Now I've coordinated a little scarf to go with his eyes and nose. I think the blues and the cream are absolutely beautiful. Now the differences between making um, a little bear like this with, which is completely unjointed to perhaps his little blue brother there who is fully jointed, the differences are that he, of course he's not poseable. He's not poseable in that we don't have a neck joint like we do here. Um, we don't have these lovely shoulders that we have with a jointed bear, but I think they work very well with a little scarf draped around their neck or a great big bow to give us a little bit more of a shoulder. Um, and also, of course, we don't have the, the posability of the arms and the legs, but as a nursery gift or perhaps as a memory bear, this one will make up really well using um, old bunny rugs and some of those little dressing gowns and fabrics that have a little bit more pile like this one here. So things to remember along the way with this one, because we can't control all of the variables because we're not using joints, you do have to pay special attention to that neck join. You have to make sure that those arms are incorporated in and they are sitting nice and straight between all of your layers. And it is, it's more of a job. It's more of a sewing job to do this one. But if you're after that nursery bear that's completely baby safe, this is definitely the one. Such a lovely shape, lovely little bottom there. And in the end, just as lovely as your jointed version. So you can go and check out my Snuggle Bear if you'd like to have a go at joints. They really are quite simple. Or perhaps you might just like to add a neck joint and sew the rest. So you can definitely do that as well. So lots of options for you. And I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed seeing this little one and keep him in mind for things like fates and on selling and charities. So many of you beautiful people are making and donating to charities. This would be a great one for that as well. So think up some other fabrics. There's a lot out there. Certainly it's a great pattern for upcycling. As I said, old dressing gowns, it would work really well with old chenille um, bedspreads. So all sorts of things, just be creative, just open your mind and think about different fabrics for this one. I've really enjoyed making it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it. You could give me a thumbs up if you, if you have enjoyed this video. In the meantime, if you want to chat with me privately, one-on-one, -on -one, by all means, come and chat to me on Instagram. So that address is across your screen there. So that's where you'll find me. That's the best way to capture my attention. But you can also come and join our Facebook group. And the benefits of that is you can share the beautiful creations that you've made using my patterns, whether it be Masterclass or right here on Pay It Forward. I'm looking forward to all of the beautiful little unjointed bears and uh, you can share those and we all get joy from it too. So I'll pop that link down below. And also thank you all so much for welcoming my mama squirrel to masterclass. Um, and we're looking forward to more accessories with her along the way. So if you want to join my masterclass, that link is also there down below. So look everybody, have a fantastic creative week and uh, keep on sharing your creations and keep on sharing the news about Pay It Forward. Put it out there on your social media platforms. Let's bring more people in and uh, they can benefit with all of these wonderful free patterns. So love talking to you all. Talk to me in the comments. Stay safe everyone and keep paying all those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.